Hi everyone, and welcome to Daisy Stalls. In today's video, I'll be showing you the process of making a western hunting set for a brand new model by one of my very talented friends, NV Studios. This model was actually her part of a trade we did, and I am absolutely beyond excited to see him in real life, so let's unbox him first. He came packaged well in a big box with the words fragile on it, although the custom still managed to bash it up somehow. Along with the custom, she also very kindly helped me get my hands on my favorite tack making glue, which I sadly can't find anywhere here in Norway. So luckily she was able to purchase a couple for me and save me since I was running dangerously low. I got to design pretty much every aspect of this horse, so it kind of seems surreal to actually be able to hold him in my very own hands. Here he is in all of his glory, and I can just say that I am thoroughly obsessed. <sighs> I mean, his sculpting job is just impeccable, his color is absolutely gorgeous, and his overall expression is just amazing. I asked her if she could give him some gray hairs to make him look kind of experienced and old, and I really like that detail. I love him so much, and he got me feeling really inspired to make him a really decked out western set, so let's head over to the craft table and get started on that. I'm going to start by making the bridle. I was originally going to use this bridle, but honestly I don't really like it and I'm also not making an Australian set so it doesn't really make sense. So for this western bridle, I am roughly going for this design. So I'm starting by making a paper template and tracing that on my leather and cutting it out. I actually glue the template to the leather then just cut around it and then peel it off when I'm done. And since this will be the cheek piece, I'm going to cut out an identical one. This bridle is a little bit different in that it has a separate strap that keeps the bit in place. And I want this strap to be very thin and delicate. So here you see me shaving down the leather as thin as I can possibly get it without it ripping. I'm going to color said leather dark brown with a leather dye. And this is pretty much standard procedure for all the leather I use for tack making. When the leather dye has dried, it slightly stiffens the leather which helps in making precise cuts and makes cutting these teeny tiny straps a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and attach a tongue buckle I made from 0.3mm wire onto the end of that strap. I made a very small incision into the cheek piece like this. Then I inserted the strap with the buckle on. Then with a separate small leather strap, I am punching a small hole into it using a empty mechanical pencil. And that strap will go into a slit that is just above the buckle. I glue down the buckle strap on the underside. Then I buckle the two parts together, and it should look something like this, with one long strap hanging out on the bottom here to attach the bit with later. Next up, I'm going to cut apart a real rondo bit just to salvage this little circle to make this decoration piece. It kind of pains me to do this, but it will look nice anyway, so... I glued these tiny nail art studs into the middle of the circles. Then while holding my breath, I glue it onto the cheek piece. Further, I'm going to attach another buckle pretty similar to the last one to the top of the cheek piece like this. I would usually glue the strap hanging out of the buckle there down on the back side, but I was just waiting so I can probably fit it to my model. Now I was looking to add a little bit extra pizzazz and I found this sticker sheet with these teeny tiny studs on it. So I'm going to cut these out and glue it onto the cheek piece. And after quite a bit of time and patience, I managed to make two identical cheek pieces. Now since my model has an open mouth, he obviously needs a bit to go on the bridle. So let's begin making it. I want it to look like a loose ring French link bit, so I'm going to start by making the rings. And I believe this wire I used was 0.5mm thick. 
Next, using 0.4mm wire, I'm going to bend it using some pliers into this kind of shape. And this should be a little bit less than half the length you want for the bit. I repeated that to make two. Then I used a tiny tiny jump ring to connect these two pieces. Then I attached the bigger rings to each end. It already looks pretty good, but to make it a bit more realistic, I'm going to use some female clay to give it a bit more shape. I kind of just smooshed the clay on, trying to create that typical bit shape, while still making sure the bit can move freely. When I was satisfied with the shape, I headed downstairs and let it bake in the oven for as long as the packaging said. Now it's fully baked, and although I like how it looks now, I kind of want it to be silver to match the rings. So I got out my silver metallic paint and painted the black part silver. And this is how it turned out. I am really happy with it actually. And now you know my secret to making those tiny bits you might have seen in my videos. Now here's the cheek piece again, and I'm going to attach it to the bit like this. I made it simple for myself by not gluing this part down yet, but if you want to switch the bit in the future, you'll have to undo that little buckle. Now that I know how everything turns out lengthwise with the bit and everything, I'm going to glue down those buckle straps that I talked about earlier. Next, I'm going to cut two super thin strips of leather, one for the crown piece and one for the throat latch. Again, I'm using my emptied mechanical pencil to punch some holes into the straps so I can connect it with the buckles later. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to zoom out the camera lens and give you guys a realistic perspective on what it looks like to make tack. So I'm usually very hunched over to get the best view of those little details and I also usually have a video essay in the background just to listen to. My videos are usually very zoomed in and heavily edited which makes the process look quick and easy but I can promise you it's anything but. Anyways, back to the straps. I made five holes on this one and I'm going to connect it to one of the cheek pieces. Next, I'm going to do a little fitting session so I know where I should punch the holes on the other side. I actually have to clean the mechanical pencil pretty often or else it gets clogged by the leather. Anyways, after that, I'm going to punch the rest of the holes for the crown piece. Next up is the throat latch and it's pretty simple to make. I have this very long thin strap and I'm going to attach a buckle to one end and then punch a few holes in the other. That's it for the throat latch, but we're not done yet. I'm going to cut out this template which I will use to make the brow band. To give it some nice detail, I'm going to use a thicker needle to add stitching details around all the edges. And I'm going to use some more of those nail art studs and add them in a line across the brow band. Alright, now we finally have all the pieces for the bridle. We have the cheek pieces, the bit, the crown piece, the throat latch, and the brow band, plus these two tiny jump rings which I'll show you how I used. First I'm running the crown piece through the brow band like this. Then I'm taking that tiny jump ring and putting it over the loop of the brow band. Then I'm threading in the throat latch through the brow band and the crown piece and the throat latch should be separated by that little jump ring. And there it is. I'm not bothering with attaching the other cheek piece because I'll need to undo it to get it on the horse anyways. So now let's make the reins. Here is the leather and hardware pieces I'm using for the reins. I assembled it to look like this. Then I'm going to sandwich a rope in between the two pieces. And in the end, I have the simple yet sleek rope reins. I attach the reins to the rings of the bit. And finally, this western bridle is done. 
After spending exactly one entire eternity trying to buckle this tiny, very delicate little piece, I finally got it on and I must admit I love it. But we're not even halfway done. I still have to make the western saddle and all the accessories, so I better get to work. I'm going to start by making the western saddle tree out of epoxy sculpt. Now, since I already have a western saddle tutorial up on my channel, I'm going to be a little bit more brief while explaining, but if you want to watch that tutorial, I'll link it down below. While the clay is still wet, I'm going to make some engravings into the seat, and I'm hoping this will look like stitching details when I cover it with leather. When the sculpting job is done, I take a small pencil dipped in water and just try to smooth out the design a little bit. Now, hindsight is 2020, but I look back at this tree and I see that it's not really that correct. I really could have done a better job with shaping it, but I'll take that as a learning lesson. When the clay was cured, I got out this small piece of leather and made sure it was big enough for the seat. Then I got out the bison kit glue and started gluing it down in sections, making sure to really push down the leather into the grooves. And it seems to be working just as I had hoped. One thing I found useful to kind of set the leather was to slightly wet it, then use the butt end of a needle to kind of push the leather down, and then when it dries, it keeps its shape and looks nice and crisp. When it is dry, I cut and glue the excess leather down by the cantle. Then suddenly, I caught up and realized I didn't even follow my own tutorial. I should have covered the pommel and horn before I did the seat. So to fix this, I just try to loosen the leather by the base of the pommel and I hope I can just kind of shove the other leather under there. So I start by covering the horn in dark brown leather. Then after a lot of cutting and stretching and gluing, I successfully covered the pommel with leather and my little mishap didn't really affect the final result, which I'm happy about. For the back of the cantle, I cut out a piece of leather that exactly fits the curve, then I glued it on. Using the same template method as I did before, I'm going to cut out the seat jockeys. I actually glued the leather together, so I'm sure both of them are completely identical. The glue I use is a fabric glue and it has this kind of latexy quality to it and it just peels right off so I don't have to worry about that. And I use the same method to make two identical pieces for the fenders. For all these different designs I cut out of the leather, I usually sketch them out on paper first so I'm sure I'm happy with the scale and the design. Then I transfer it onto the leather because I do not want to waste any. For the actual stirrups, I use the exact same method as I did in the tutorial video, and I also use the same color leather which I did on the seat, which is slightly lighter, because I thought it would be cool to kind of have a two-tone thing going on. They look very pristine though, so I'm going to take some sandpaper and slightly rough them up to make them look a little bit more realistic. The fenders, stirrup leathers, and stirrups are done, so let's go ahead and attach them to the saddle. I love how that looks already. And if the seat looks a little bit different to you, that's because I thought it was a bit too yellow, so I added some watered out dye to it, and I really like how that looks now. For the skirt, I didn't thin the leather down as much as I want it to be a little bit more substantial, and I cut it out according to my sketched up template. Now at this point, I realized that the skirt was a bit too wide for my tree, and having a second look at some western saddle pictures, I realized most of them are sewn down the middle, so that was an excellent way to add another realistic detail and also make it a bit more narrow. So I used a regular sewing thread and needle and just sew back and forth to connect the two pieces. Then I go back and do some cross stitching where you will see it. Now you might have seen me use this tool in my other videos for sculpting, but this is actually a leather tool. 
So today I'm going to use it as it actually is intended and I'm going to make some engravings around the edges of the skirt, fenders, and seat jockeys. Now with a little time skip, I've made the top skirt and attached a plethora of D-rings. So now it's time to assemble the seat onto the skirt. Ooh, it's finally taking shape! I glued on the side jockeys as well and I really like how it looks so far. But when I look at the silhouette, I can't help but think that the gullet is a bit close to the pommel, like it's a bit short, but I guess some western saddles maybe look like that. I'm no expert, so you guys tell me. Anyways, since this saddle will be used together with a lot of gear, I'm adding some little jump rings and fastening points around the saddle. Now, as you can see, the saddle is not very pretty on the underside, so to neaten that up and make it a bit more comfortable for my model to wear, I'm going to take this piece of felt and glue it on the underside. I think it's a really nice addition and gives it a nice finished look. After posting a quick picture on my story on Instagram, I'm going to resume and start making the girth straps. But my gosh, if it would help if this darn leather would stop ripping every other second, it was driving me up the wall. <sighs> Alright, starting with a fresh piece of leather, I started carefully, carefully thinning it and just hoping it would not rip again. Okay, I'm going to make do with what I have for now and make the flank cinch and the girth straps and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, my mood has improved and so has my leather thinning skills apparently because I managed to make the flank cinch and these two girth straps. In addition, I also added a few saddle strings made of thinly cut leather. For the cinch, I really wanted to try some cool braiding methods and I was really enthusiastic about it, but I ended up failing miserably, so I just ended up doing it pretty much the same way I did it in the tutorial. I did try to make it a bit more fancy by adding some weaving details by the buckles though. And with that, I can finally declare this super time-consuming saddle done. The next thing I have in mind for this set is a leather holder for this rifle I made a little while ago. And I did it again with the time skip. No, but this was quite easy to make. It's just a folded piece of leather with some details and a couple straps to hold it to the saddle. Now the right side looks pretty good, but the left side looks a bit empty. So let's make something for that too. I made a small armature out of tinfoil and wire. Then I started covering it with Fimo clay. And you may or may not see where this is going. Anyways, I baked it, then when it's cool, I got out the paints. I looked at several reference pictures while painting because I don't really have particular experience in painting this particular thing. <laughs> and this is how the paint turned out. And to add some extra textures and realism, I'm going to add some feathers. So fun fact, about five years ago, we got like three geese and I saved some of their feathers, so they got repurposed here. Now, I'm going to hang this pheasant by the legs to the saddle using the saddle strings. And I think that looks pretty darn cool. And it kind of gives me Red Dead Redemption 2 vibes, if you're familiar. The very last thing I'm going to do is make the saddle pad out of this old scarf my mom gave me, along with the felt. And when that was completed, the whole set is pretty much done. So I tacked up my model, and we headed out to a really nice photo location by the sea. And finally, I can present to you the finished result.
Oh, and I decided to name the custom Ferdinand. I think it really suits him. I am planning on adding some more accessories to the set, maybe a breast color and a few saddlebags, and definitely some wildlife that, uh, unfortunately got in contact with the rifle. <laughs> Anyways, I thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you have enjoyed it, and please comment down below what you thought about it. Alright, I will see you next time. Bye!